Hello, my name is Dr. Anne Marie Vandersanden. I'm a professor of horticulture at Iowa State University. Welcome to the online garden design course. The module I'll be presenting is titled Garden History, Ancient China and Ancient Japan. In this presentation, I will discuss the gardens of ancient China and ancient Japan. Because of the time constraints of this online course, I will just highlight some of the key features or elements that characterize gardens from these different eras, with the intent that you will then be able to recognize these design characteristics in contemporary designs. The earliest records of Chinese gardens date from 1400 BC. Some of the common earlier examples are from the Han Dynasty, which was 200 BC to 200 AD, and common later examples are from the Ming Dynasty, which was 1358 to 1644 AD. These are the gardens often referred to as the Suzhou Gardens. Throughout time, Chinese gardens have been a place of refuge from social conflicts. They provide a space to find peace, inner balance, a renewal of spirit, and for recreation. The Buddhist philosophy related to yin, darkness, and yang, lightness, is evident throughout Chinese gardens. The image on this slide is from the Lion's Grove Garden in Suzhou, China. It shows a massive rock arrangement and large water feature with a raised bridge over it. A key feature of Chinese gardens is that they create harmony among opposing elements, such as light and dark. The gardens do not have a straight or geometrical layout, in contrast to many Western gardens I've discussed in this course. You must move through the garden in order to fully experience it, because there are many different views as a result of the garden being divided into many different spaces. The garden often include buildings and pavilions, and a number of the elements included in the garden have symbolism and represent things such as mountains, spiritual islands, or to immortalize a person. The image on this slide is of an intricate stone carving in the humble administrator's garden in Suzhou, China. The image on this slide is of the humble administrator's garden in Suzhou, China as well. It includes a large water feature, rock outcroppings, a raised bridge, and numerous pavilions reflecting Chinese architecture. Chinese gardens have a number of features that make them unique. The first feature is how shapes are used and what they represent. Circles are often included and they represent heaven. Squares or rectangles are included and they signify earth and human social organizations. Chinese gardens include a number of walls. The entire garden is surrounded by a wall, usually 10 to 15 feet tall. Often this exterior wall has a wavy edge on top to suggest floating clouds. The garden itself includes a number of shorter walls within the garden that divide the space into different rooms. The top image on this slide shows a circle moon gate separating two spaces in the garden. It also shows an intricate paving pattern as well as extensive use of rocks and just a few plants. The bottom image on the slide shows an exterior wall that surrounds the garden. Chinese gardens include paths and bridges to enable a person to move throughout the garden. These paths and bridges are often winding and are not the shortest distance between two points. This allows the garden visitor to see more views within the garden and experience it more fully. Chinese gardens are characterized by having extensive paving patterns throughout. They do not have turf grass in the open spaces within the garden. The intricate paving patterns are used to create visual images such as mosaic flowers and leaves or geometric shapes. The top image on this slide shows a zigzag bridge commonly found in Chinese gardens. 
The bottom image is a paving pattern of two different flower shapes. Large and complex rock arrangements are always found in Chinese gardens. They are often a dominant part of the garden, more so than plants. Rocks from Lake Tai are considered to be the most authentic. The rocks can be used in groups or mass, and they can also be included to symbolize mountains, animals, or clouds. Chinese gardens include a limited number of plant species, and these plants are often used as specimen plants, not planted in large groups. Just as with the rocks, plants are often included because of symbolism. For example, lotus plants are often found within water features because the lotus flower represents purity and nobility. The image on this slide is a vignette of a rock and plant feature surrounded by walls on two sides. The earliest records of ancient Japanese gardens date from 500 AD. These early gardens were similar to Chinese gardens in large part because the garden style was introduced by Japanese priests who studied with Buddhist monks in China. The gardens incorporated a number of Buddhist motifs, including symbolism and mythology. Ancient Japanese gardens included a combination of formal or manicured elements combined with naturalistic features. The image on this slide is of the tea garden in the Portland, Oregon Japanese garden. Some of the defining features of the gardens of ancient Japan are that they were not geometrical or axial in their layout. Texture was, and continues to be, an important part of Japanese gardens. Textural elements include plants as well as stones. Texture is accentuated by various tonal contrasts where light and dark are next to each other, in particular when light green is contrasted with dark green. And severely pruned plants, or bonsai, are central to Japanese gardens. The top image of this slide is of the Pagoda Lantern from Sapporo, Japan, a sister city to Portland, Oregon, and the surrounding Portland Japanese Garden. The bottom image on this slide is of a large pine tree that has been pruned to create a bonsai form. The image on this slide shows an overall view of an area within the Portland Japanese Garden. It highlights the tonal contrasts created by the various shades of green, shrubs that have been sheared and shaped, rocks and pebbles, a bridge, and moss being grown as the ground cover providing yet another shade of green. Japanese gardens are similar to Chinese gardens in their extensive use of rock. The stones may be large, and used as specimens or massed together. Most Japanese gardens have a dry garden where the small gravel-like stones are raked into various patterns to represent water. These dry gardens also have symbolic rock formations in the garden representing religious teachings and other culturally significant events. Stone lanterns are also found throughout Japanese gardens and they often have symbolism associated with the size and shape of the lantern, as well as its placement within the garden. Moss is the most prevalent plant species in Japanese gardens. It is used to cover most every ground surface. Japanese gardens include a limited number of plant species. Some of these species include conifers, which are, which are also associated with symbolism, as well as cherry, crabapple, azalea, and magnolia, often associated with rebirth or awakening since they bloom very early in the spring. The top image on this slide is of the dry garden at the Portland, Oregon Japanese Garden. The bottom image shows both a dry garden as well as the moss ground cover.
This brings me to the conclusion of this presentation on the garden history, ancient China, and ancient Japan. In summary, this presentation has highlighted how the unique characteristics and features that are linked to the ancient gardens of China and Japan. The gardens of ancient China date back to 1400 BC. These gardens include symbolic shapes, walls, paths and bridges, pavement, rock arrangements, and few plants. Gardens of Japan date back to 500 AD. These gardens include many types of symbolic rocks and stone lanterns and a limited selection of plants. I hope that through this presentation and the other presentation on characteristics and history of gardens from ancient Western civilizations, you can see how gardens have evolved over time and how humankind has long manipulated their living environment to meet their needs. I encourage you to explore this topic in more detail as there is so much more to learn. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on garden design history as part of the Iowa State University Department of Horticulture online garden design course.